right, so Lil, what are you going to show us today? So the first thing we're going to start talking about is Azure Notebooks. Azure Notebooks, what are those? So Azure Notebooks are kind of Microsoft's current clone of Jupyter Notebooks. It's going to sync well with Azure in the future. So if you're a data scientist and you want to, like a really interactive REPL experience where you can just shift enter and immediately get results, but also do your cloud computing, get your high performance, and you know have it everything on the cloud, come to Microsoft. We have it in Azure Notebooks. Excellent. <laughs> and the format looks pretty similar to everything we'd expect to see with Jupyter Notebooks. You can do exports. You can you know, have custom little, um, custom little imports. And, and yeah, tell us more about the thing that you have on your screen. Yeah. So we're going to start off really simple. So mm -hmm. we do want to talk about machine learning. You yes. know, we have two awesome data scientists <laughs> here to talk about it. Yes. And we're going off of a post I did for my blog that is a replicate of the Titanic Kaggle competition. It's mm -hmm. like an intro. If you just wanted to start learning what a random forest was, mm -hmm. you, know, you can check out Data Volcano. Yeah. And you can also follow us here. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. And this kind of walks through. And based on the, um, the list of passengers that the Titanic had before it sank, um, mm -hmm. it predicts whether or not they would be willing to survive or you know, pass away. It's a little morbid, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, we all like the the starting off on yeah. a happy note. We're scientists, so we start <laughs> out with a hypothesis, and our th hypothesis is like, is are, is your survival on the Titanic determined by your wealth? Is it determined by your age? Is it determined by your gender? And so, let's find out. Absolutely. So we're gonna just start. This is a pandas and NumPy based project, so only two little imports. And once and again. Azure Notebooks, just shift enter and you're good to go. <laughs> yep, and those are two libraries that are um, free and open source through the Python community. Pandas was originally created by Wes McKinney, and NumPy is a numeric Python programming um, programming library. Yeah. Yep. Also, Azure Notebooks is free. You can use it from mm -hmm. anywhere. All you really have to do, I guess we maybe should have started with this, is if you type in Azure Notebooks into you know, your search bar, you click here. And look at that. I'm already logged in, so I cheated a bit. Mm -hmm. But you can log in and get started and have your own libraries and upload data. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So um, we, once again, I cheated. I preloaded my data. But you can come in here. You can choose your data from Dropbox, upload, or download. Um, I chose to upload from my downloads. So if you come down, I have the Titanic file here. You just hit open. Hey, now it's in your library. Excellent. <laughs> so uh, keep your files small. I think there's a one gig limit here on Azure Notebooks too. Yeah. So first, you know, trying it out. Maybe 100 megs is a good place to start. Mm -hmm. uh, notice that you have a path name here too. So remember that when you're trying to load your data, if you deviate. So let's check out this data frame a little bit. Like what's in here? So if you just load this raw CSV. Um, once again, you can get this CSV if you want to file directly from my blog. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I can show that really quickly, too. So if you come in, I have a nice little link to it. Nice and quick. Good internet here at Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beginner, machine learning. This nice little picture of a sinking Titanic. Hopefully, that doesn't happen to any of us. Mm -hmm. And you can come in, click this link, and it will just, hey, download you the Titanic. So coming back here, what is in this? We have what class, like what fair were they? Are they the rich people? Are they the poor people? Uh, did they survive or not? <laughs> um, age, and just pretty much like the indexing here. And something that's really cool to note, too, is that um, for the sex code, obviously that would be translating to male or female. Mm -hmm. um, but as you can see, for, for a number of data science um, data science activities, we, we change everything to zero or one. So it's uh, kind of a, a two-part two um, code example. Exactly. Yep. Unfortunately, a lot of the Python uh, machine learning or machine learners, I guess, can't really handle t like strings right now. Yep. Um, some in R can, but mm -hmm. if you want to do strings, so if you want to do red, blue, green, you really have to convert it to, to a factor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and even then, it's kind of hard because you know they're trying to bin things. And so, what is 1.5 when mm -hmm. you're talking about gender? Yep. Or so it's important to make sure you think about it a little bit more as you're doing more advanced projects than. Something so nicely set up as one and zero. Absolutely. Data sets are never this pretty in the wild. Yeah. 
So another thing to note here is that um, we have a lot of columns we don't necessarily need, so we have to do a little bit of data cleaning. Yep. So let's jump into that in our next, oh boy, big file, of course. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop the NANs. If you look through and we're scrolling through, there's some NANs, especially in H. Um, there's different ways to get around this. Uh, I went with a simpler approach on this one, but you could also interpolate or make a guess. Mm -hmm. um, you could say like, well, the average age of the people who had Mr. and were third class fair were 22, and you can test that. Mm -hmm. But since this is a beginner project, we're going to keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. So we're going to drop that out, and then we're also going to um, change one of the column names to, we're going to take the solution column, so we're going to call that the survived, the one or zero, mm -hmm. did they live or not? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to drop out some of these other, this unnamed column, this, all this, there's no clean data set, yeah. ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Paige and I both uh, worked as data scientists for a while, and mm -hmm. there's just, I've never been handed a clean data set. No. <laughs> but, um, but the nice thing is, is that Pandas offers a number of amazing tools to help kind of take those untenable data sets and get them into something that you can feed into a machine learning model. Exactly. Yep. So if we just shift enter there, uh, let's check out our relative size. So if you look here above, like, I don't know if I can come back here. We have 13, 13 rows. <laughs> Seems like a lucky number, right? Yeah. <laughs> so if we did, that's how, how many rows we have. Let's see how many we have life left now. So we're do length, so mm -hmm. L-E-N, D-F. Oh, we got here. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> uh, oh, it doesn't like survived. Um, it doesn't like survive. Oh, I know why. It's because it's not, hang on. Let's. Read this in again. And then, okay, yeah. so that worked. Mm -hmm. All right, let's insert, because this is just like Jupyter, let's insert a new row here. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to come in and we're going to go insert cell below. See how easy that is? This is why this is nice for data science. Mm -hmm. Like, you make a mistake, mm -hmm. you can just repeat and go. You don't have to like run a massive script that might take 15 minutes. You can just, right. oh, okay, let's test this. Mm -hmm. So let's try this again. OK, so we've dropped 600 rows out of our data set. Wow, and that's just from removing those not a number columns. Exactly. Or not a number, not a number records. Wow, yeah. OK. Yeah. So like normally, see that reaction right there? Normally yeah. this is like data science, like 100 level is like, you just dropped half your data set. It's like, <laughs> no, guys, you can't do that. Like there, yeah. you, you, can't make, you can't make good judgment calls based on just half of your data. But Exactly. But beginner project. Beginner project, and it's important to remember that it's better to have correct data than incorrect data. Absolutely. A lot of bad data will not help your model. In fact, mm -hmm. a lot of bad data will ensure you predict bad data. This is so. true. <laughs> so, so tell us more. Keep going. Yeah, let's keep going. So the next thing we're going to do is that, uh-oh, we have in our little printout of our data frame. So if we print out our data frame again, for P class, a little bit of data cleaning again, we have all these first. And we can't throw that into like statistics, like what's first? That's yeah. a string. Mm -hmm. So another quick little data cleaning is that we just have to drop that. So we're going to use map and lambda. Um, this is a little bit more like semi-advanced Python, but this is a beautiful thing within mm -hmm. pandas, mm -hmm. is that you can basically use lambda functions to like repeat a task across an entire row or column really quickly. Mm -hmm. So you can run through it like instantly change all that out. And if we were to print out, uh, look at this, this is super cool. We can go above for anyone who hasn't used Jupyter before. And look at upgraded. So now, Excellent. <laughs> now we have ones, we're good to go. We have it's threes, age is clean. I think we're ready to build a model. Excellent. <laughs> so the first thing you do, this is how easy it is to get started in machine learning. Mm -hmm. If you've never done machine learning, mm -hmm. it's like, this is really the next like five lines of code are all you need to build a random forest. They're going to change your life, we swear. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not hard. Mm -hmm. It's really just the first thing we're going to do is what is called the train test split. Mm -hmm. So you can train your model on all of your data mm -hmm. and then test it, and you'll be testing on your train set, which means 
your model will already know it's coming. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like if I asked Paige, like, hey, Paige, what was the weather like yesterday in Austin? <laughs> and I would be like, man, it was super hot, Lo. How was the weather like in Seattle? Oh, it was actually sunny. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be, and that's clearly different than if I asked Paige, like, hey, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? And I would be like, I do not know, but I hope it is super less hot, Lou. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and so you have to be fair, mm -hmm. really, when you're evaluating your model. So you need to split. Mm -hmm. I personally like to, when starting out, split 75% mm -hmm. uh, for training, 25% for testing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you have a ratio you prefer, Paige? So I usually like um, 70 for testing, um, 15, or 70 for training, 15 for testing, and then 15 for validation afterward. Oh, yeah. Paige so, does it right. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, but apparently, like, there's, there's additional research, um, research being done that shows that uh, there, there might be some advantages to changing up that configuration a little bit. So your Definitely. mileage may vary. Definitely. Um, we would love to hear your feedback. So. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. I know I personally will switch a yeah. lot to yeah. make sure it's consistent too. Absolutely. So a really good way to see if your model predictions are, you know, reliable is let's say we split up that train test set 60-40. Yeah. Are you still getting the same results? Are mm -hmm. you still the same accuracy? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, making sure that all of the data that you're using is, is telling you something real and valid as opposed exactly. to like special snowflake world doesn't really exist. Yeah. So. It'd be great if it did. But mm -hmm. that's why we're using statistics right now to mm -hmm. figure out what's going on. So we're going to run. Um, the one thing to note here is that, so we have solution column. So that's, did they survive? Mm -hmm. We have the test size, so 25%. Mm -hmm. And random state equals 2. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? <laughs> it means that I basically want to ensure I'm using the same split as I'm testing to get the best result. So if you don't set this, it'll pick randomly every time. And mm -hmm. if you run the same model over and over again, it'll pick a random data set every time. And you'll never really be able to compare. You'll be like, wow, my model just got better. <laughs> oh, it just got worse. Oh, it just got better. <laughs> so you want to initially probably set that. But as you're validating and you're trying to figure out how stable your model is, you, you could actually just set that to random and be like, OK, I'm 81% accurate, 81% accurate, 81.2% accurate. Cool. That's a pretty stable model. <laughs> Excellent. Are you ready for the magic? I am. I am ready. I'm waiting with bated breath. All right. Do you want me to do a drum roll? Yeah, we can do a drum roll. We're going to run our model. OK. The shift enter magic here. All right. And that was it. We just ran it. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> so it's, it's really literally that easy. For those of you who haven't done machine learning before, we literally just set. We called, basically, classifier CLF. That's pretty standard mm -hmm. Stack Overflow terminology. Mm -hmm. um, we fit it. X is our train, Y is our, our train. So X is our non-solution columns. Mm -hmm. So what were our features? So mm -hmm. you know what gender were they? What fair class? And Y train is our, once again, that's our solution. Yeah. And again, it's really, really important to make sure that um, that column that indicates whether somebody lives or dies isn't included in your training data, because yes. otherwise <laughs> you would have 100% accuracy all the time. Again. Yeah. <laughs> It's about finding the answer, not giving the model Absolutely. <laughs> the like foresight. So, and then we just predict. So, OK, now for the really exciting part. Let's see how accurate we were just removing half our data. So there's three things that I'm going to run through here. And one is accuracy score. So this is just a sklearn metric. Um, we got a precision score. So like how on point were we most of the time? Since this is a classifier, we can do precision. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the confusion matrix is True positive, um, false positive, true. or true, true negative, or oh my gosh. <laughs> this is like, I just have enough confusion here, uh -huh. the confusion <laughs> Basically, your diagonals are true positive and true negative. So yeah. where you're right, and your off diagonals are? False positive, false negative. There we go. Yep. I'm going to have Paige Excellent. do that. <laughs> just enough in my head going on. Mm -hmm. It confuses me. All right, what was our accuracy? We got 75%. On point, um, precision was 0 0.66, so like two thirds. And then that's our probably more indicative is when are we right? So we were right 94 plus 48. You know, that's that's where it's getting the 75 percent. Like we got, did they survive? And then did they like not survive right 75 percent of the time? And then we're split on our false positive and false negatives. 
like 24, 27. Right, and since we removed half the data again, that's pretty dang good, right? Exactly. Yeah. So if we're going to modify off of that, trying to get at, you know, a little bit more information can be awesome. Mm -hmm. So going through, if we want to list, this is one of my favorite things. Feature importances are mm -hmm. so crux yeah. when working with random forests. Like, uh. what this does is basically it goes through and it tells you when it was making its splits. So this is like if you want to do some cool Googling, like what's the Gini coefficient? Mm -hmm. How is a random forest actually working behind the scenes? Mm -hmm. And that second, you know, long yeah. runtime I had, mm -hmm. what were the most important things in making the split for survival? Right. So what would determine if you survived? Uh, really, it's a pretty even split between age and gender. Mm -hmm. We got 0.42 and 0.42, oh. and your fair class only mattered 15%. So. so basically what's happening is that if you were a child or a woman, yeah. you were extremely likely to survive as exactly. opposed to being, as opposed to being a, a, an adult man. Exactly. Excellent. So, and then, you know, other ways people have kind of modified off of this, and we can, you know, as the later part of this series, we mm -hmm. could go into, like, different ways to improve upon this and maybe not dump half our data before we even start. Yeah. Is, like, uh, I think the winner of this Calgary competition went through and identified Miss versus Mrs. versus Mr. And, like, basically extracted off of that, like, how old they were, what their status was, mm -hmm. and used that as an additional feature. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. The easiest way to improve a random forest model is to add more useful <laughs> yeah. features. Yeah, and actually um, at the last Train AI conference, the CEO of Kaggle said that the best teller for whether or not a machine learning model will be successful isn't what algorithm you're using or how powerful of a computer you have. It's like you mentioned, the creativity of the data scientist. So totally. what kind of features can you derive from an existing data set and what kind of features do you know that you can remove? Yes. So in case you guys didn't know, being a data scientist is so much fun. It's super <laughs> cool. It's super <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think that's the end of this segment. I <laughs> agree. So yeah. let us know what you thought. Tell us, um, give us your feedback and ask us any questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you.